Hello there, right here we have a brand new snapshot. This is 21W18A and this is for the 1.17 Caves and Cliffs update part one. It comes with a few changes to 1.17, but it also comes with a bunch of 1.18 cave changes including how the ore will spawn in that data pack. There's not too much to go over so let's go through it quickly. If you enjoy learning about the newest things about 1.17 as well as cool things you can do with these new features make sure you guys are subscribed as well as have the bell turned on and after watching this head over to my twitch stream where we will be playing with the newest features big thanks to bisect hosting for providing us this amazing testing world where all my viewers can hop on and test stuff with me you can get 25 percent off by using the code ray or the link down in the description I made a change to infested blocks compared to normal blocks when mined up now when you mine these blocks, you can see it takes a little bit of time, but when you mine these, it's going to take twice as long to mine. So it's pretty obvious that there is an infested block here, and if you wouldn't mine it up, it would be a silverfish that pops out. In the past, you could also detect the infested blocks by trying to break them by hand. You can see that this one's really hard to break by hand, but with the infested one is actually really easy. So you should be able to avoid accidentally mining these once again in survival. They also made a change to the screaming goats, which is a 2% chance of any goat having this property of screaming. Now these goats actually have some other unique properties, as in they will ram attack stuff more often than normal goats. So if you're looking for something to constantly attack other mobs, you'd have to look for that rare variation of the screaming one. Now one of the biggest changes that they did with this snapshot is they updated the data pack, which they We'll eventually put it into a full release called 1.18. If you want to download the data pack, I'll link it down below. But the change that they made to this is how the ore is distributed among the Y levels. So we won't see this in 1.17. As in 1.17, the world doesn't go below Y level 0, which this one does. First thing that they did is they reduced the spawning of the copper ore to compensate for the large ore veins which they have added in. They also change large ore veins so that they are slightly more rare and slightly smaller on average. But the overall size is going to be quite large. They also increase the chance of finding raw ore blocks within inside of these big veins. The cave carvers, which are the cave generation that we used to see before 1.16, now also appear below Y level zero inside of ocean biomes. They also increase the size of the carvers type of cave as well as the neural ones. So it's less likely for the caves to get pinched down so small that you can't find the rest of it, leaving little fragments of cave that are they're not accessible. It also changes the noodle caves will no longer generate above Y level 30, so the surface will be less riddled with holes. They also removed deep slate blobs above Y level 0. That means once again we can branch mine at this Y level without running into deep slate which is a lot harder to mine up. And just above Y level 0 is one of the best levels to pick up all the different types of ores in one go. It also extended the vertical range of the small blobs of iron ore, make it possible to find iron in caves near the surface. This is obviously useful for speedrunners, as before they would have to go down a bit below the sea level in order to actually find any. It also reduced the amount of iron in normal sized blobs to compensate for the large veins and the increased range in which you can find iron. Now besides new features that the Mojang developers added in, we also got to see a bunch of fixes that they added into the snapshot. The first one being that ravines and caves were being cut off in very unnatural ways because they reach a chunk border. Adventure mode players could extinguish a candle, which is sort of considered griefing and they now change it so they can't. Aldrin's full of lava weren't producing any burning sound when items are falling into it. If you guys have seen my Secrets of the Minecraft shorts video, you'll know that Zoglins can attack armor stands. They were also attacking marked armor stands as well as invisible ones. Both are using map making, so they didn't want this to occur. Another consequence of armor stand was that the puffer fish were actually puffing up when they got near armor stands. Another problem is that the goats were attacking these invisible armor stands. Now by default, the small drip leaf is two blocks tall, but when bone milled, there's a chance of it becoming one of these, but only a single block tall. So essentially it would get smaller. There you go. Four blossoms were able to be placed underwater and give the player air. Essentially, they couldn't be waterlogged. In chunk generation, there were some problems that whole areas would be completely black and they wouldn't render. They also fixed a problem to do with the extreme lag occurring when generating new chunks. This included a problem to do with the chunk not being there when it was requested by the game, as well as the player crashing 
while exploring chunks. And they fix a problem to do with chunks occasionally not being properly saved. There's a problem that baby goats weren't always following their parents. They also fix this problem that I talked about in my last video, which is the goat's legs were moving very strangely, where either side moves at the exact same time. Also, the goat's eye level, which is the red line, is outside of the white line, essentially meaning they can get suffocated if pushed upwards into a block, and that has been fixed. Goats were also able to jump even though they were on slime blocks, which shouldn't be the case, and they fixed that. Goats' heads were a little bit crooked when they were inside of a boat. The shading of the ears is not correct. You see there's a dark mark near the center of the head, where this dark mark is towards the outside. Piglins were attracted to the raw gold item or weren't getting mad at the player with breaking the blocks near them. Now that's changed. They also fixed a problem to do with small drip leaves not being updated properly when removing the water. When mobs would die, they did not produce any death particles. When using the last durability of an anvil, it would cause the item being repaired to fall out of the UI rather than being placed back into it. There's also a problem with when you load up resource packs in the snapshots, it would cause you to crash. And we had this problem quite a bit during our stream, so I'm glad it's fixed. They also fixed this inconsistency in the creative menu where or tile variations of Deep Slate were coming before the brick variations. The Deep Slate variations of the ores showing up on a map had colors that were inconsistent with the Deep Slate blocks themselves. Raw ores could be found floating in the middle of a cave when a part of the large ore veins that are currently in the data pack and will eventually be in 1.18. They also fix a few bugs to do with people and custom worlds and crashes and similar problems. Quite a few interesting things to look at in this snapshot and we will be doing a full testing of the snapshot during our stream. If you'd like to join me in my world as we look at the newest features and see what type of machines and farms that we can design out of them, hop on over to my stream. Link is down in the description. Make sure to drop a follow while you're over there. And if you learned something by watching this video, make sure to leave a like as well as share it with others. That is the best way to show support on the video. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys over my stream. Bye bye!